Hi, I'm Anna Twinney and I welcome you to Spook Busting Secrets. In the next 90 minutes or so, I shall share some secrets on desensitizing with you, which will remove the mystery and shed some light on some of the issues you might be experiencing. We are also going to delve deeper and explore the many aspects that are vital to the practice of true horsemanship, all to help you create a genuine trust-based partnership with your horse. Horses are naturally flight animals and when you take away their ability to run they often go into fight or freeze mode. If you find yourself trying to school or desensitize your horse out on the trail, in a show or even just in a new environment, you've waited too long. Even the well seasoned dressage horse, show jumpers, western pleasure and in general performance horses have all faced confusing and frightening circumstances. Their training had to begin somewhere. Unexpected events like barking dogs running out on the street or plastic bags blowing right in front of your horse, trucks and vehicles surprising you from behind or even high energy from crowds at shows can all cause stressful situations for both horse and rider. So taking that extra time to familiarize your horse to the troubles that could lie ahead and how to deal with them beforehand could mean the difference between a safe and fun riding experience and a dangerous or even deadly one. By the end of this program, you will know how to maintain the perfect atmosphere for your horse to see you as a leader. You will see how to replace fear, concern and discomfort with confidence, calm and comfort, creating an even stronger bond than maybe you even thought possible. And you will see how reaching out to your horse is the foundation for all the desensitizing work you will do. Knowing that you have worked on your horse to help to prevent the bolting, bucking, bulking, rearing and spinning will give you the comfort and confidence needed in the saddle to really fully embrace the opportunity to be with one another. If you want to desensitize your horse, one of the safest and effective places to begin would be to talk to your horse by reaching out to them in a round pen environment. If you've been fortunate enough to watch the DVD series, Reach Out to Natural Horsemanship, you would have gained great insights into the language of the horse, the intricacies, and the details of the methods. If you haven't, then I recommend that you watch at least DVD number three, Demystifying the Round Pen. This will allow you to watch the interaction between human and horse, and you'll gain the foundation required to move on to desensitizing them. For now, let's tune in, watch two students as they communicate nicely with their horses. Reaching out to your horse is a unique experience. During this process, you communicate in a non-verbal language, the language of the horse. By adopting gestures and movements already familiar to your horse, you begin to create a trust-based partnership from the ground up. Reaching out creates an opportunity for you to discover more about yourself, for horses are our mirrors. They recognize our thoughts, our beliefs, and our limitations. They recognize who we truly are and usually before we know ourselves. This is an opportunity for you to recognize your strengths and weaknesses and to discover any areas needing development. By reaching out to your horse in a safe environment like the round pen, you can instantly assess their abilities and physical condition. You can determine what is natural to their breed, conformation, and their personal limitations. You'll also learn about your horse's personality. For horses have multiple personality types, and it's during this process that you learn intricacies about their character and traits. You'll discover their likes, dislikes, their needs, willingness, sensitivity and concentration level. Develop rhythm and balance while encouraging forward motion and motivation. And most importantly, you'll create an environment based on mutual understanding and respect. Horses never lie. And it's while you negotiate clear mutual boundaries, acknowledge communication and become a passive leader that you learn about their pure history. If you let them, the horses will teach you how to become a confident leader, reflect your intentions and show you how to stay in the moment. But most of all, they will teach you about trust, what it means and how to gain genuine trust. So you turn the other way and just believe that it's going to be coming with you. Not too far away from it. Just look him in the eye right now and then walk away. There you go. Good job. And you can stop just there and praise him. Right, yeah. 
In preparation to successfully desensitize your horse to foreign objects and stimulus, your horse has to fully understand your choice of pressure halter. Imagine just how hard it must be for horses to have to assimilate your request while attempting their best to override their natural flight instincts under critical and stressful circumstances. Instead of causing him the unnecessary trauma and us potential frustration and risk, we can break down each step into digestible pieces. Begin by teaching your horse to come off pressure in a quiet environment. After all, they naturally lean into pressure as a way of self-preservation. It's not uncommon for a young, uneducated horse to brace himself or raise his head high into the pressure zone. This same behavior will subside as your horse learns how to find the area of comfort. A nice way to begin is to teach your horse to lower his head to the ground. This not only enables him to seek out comfort, but it also builds trust as his head is lower to the ground, taking away any thought of fear or flight and replacing it with relaxation and trust in you, the leader. Once you've achieved this step, you're ready to teach your horse the three Ds, dance, distance and direction. In step one, creating a fluid and rhythmic dance will allow you to control your horse's movement, creating clear boundaries, defining personal space and rewarding each try your horse makes. Step two, the distance portion of the 3Ds is crucial for your horse to learn how to come off pressure by himself. No longer are you close for immediate consolation. Instead, you have created an opportunity for your horse to learn. For your horse with the forward motion, there's an instant release of pressure and multiple rubs ahead. To create a responsive horse, concentrate on the accuracy of your timing and the quantity of pressure. The results speak for themselves as your horse will jog towards you as soft as putty in your fingers. Once you've mastered these steps as a team, you can begin step three, directing your horse. I recommend that you lead your horse with her nose at your shoulder. Unless he's a stud colt or stallion, then you'd need to adapt your position. Explore taking your horse through an obstacle course in hand, making it your classroom, and be creative. Include multiple speeds within your chosen gait. Build in stops and places to back up and through. Gauge your horse's natural pace and always set them up for success. Remember to make each task as simple as possible, building on your achievements as you go along. Be mindful of your body positioning and body language so that you remain in a safe place at all times. Jenny's guy is a little pushy and she needs to consider whether she's too soft on him or if he's getting bored with this exercise. Either way, he's no longer paying attention and has begun to seek another form of entertainment, Jenny herself. In cases like these, you need to create a clear boundary of what is acceptable and what is unacceptable. Try not to fuss by continuous reprimands and keep the lesson full of new surprises. Watch how Jenny's horse no longer pushes her around when she moves into the new obstacle. This environment with increased distractions actually keeps his attention and the previous unwanted behaviour disappears. Both horses are now ready to graduate to their next level. The lessons you're about to see took place during a clinic in an idyllic setting where the arena is kept naturally cool during summer months and the footing has been carefully selected to reflect the horse's needs. In preparation for the day, we dampened and groomed the arena and organised a whole spook busting team to assist with the setting up process. And what better team than those participating in the clinic itself? If you can, I always suggest working with others as a team. What could have been a mammoth task became quite an exciting event. Not only was the workload divided, but everyone had their own creative ideas to add to the mix. We chose everyday items that could cause our horses concern and included visual stimulus, noise makers and obscure sensations together with specific experiences known to have created past issues. We placed each item at a specific station to ensure accurate spacing between each obstacle and loud noises. This also decreased the localization of stimulus to help the horses cope with sudden movements or disturbances. Consideration was also given to the spectators by erecting round pen panels to ensure their personal safety and that of any potential loose horse. 
Remember, this is where the fun begins. Now you get to create your own setting. You can build in anything that's local to your area or your personal needs. We chose a myriad of stimulus, including silly string, balloons, sparklers, umbrellas, saucepan lids, beach ball, and so much more. Maybe you're preparing for your horse to become part of a specific team and you want to incorporate a mattress to help your horse overcome the fear of spongy surfaces. Platforms, staircases, teeter-totters, just to name a few, would all be additional options for your horse to learn to deal with the unknown. Draw upon everyone's imagination to create the safest and most adventurous scenarios you can think of to cover any situation you might come across out on the trail or in the arena. Once your course is set up, you're ready to introduce your horse to his new environment. Take your time to gently walk him into the arena, taking personality and experiences into account. Walk him around each obstacle, observing his likes and dislikes, fears and concerns. And don't forget to expose him to the objects out of both eyes. This way you can make a conscious decision where the best place would be to begin. Flagging is a terminology widely known in the natural horsemanship industry today. It's a method whereby the trainer introduces her horse to a plastic bag while using a rod or a stick. I preferably like to use a whip as it's flexible and I believe I'm less likely to become injured in the process. The intention behind this method is to override the natural flight instincts of your horse. So not to induce the flight, freeze or fight mode, but instead bring in relaxation and acceptance. This is known as desensitizing. However, if the trainer assumes her horse readily accepts this act, she'd be mistaken. For if all you ever do is advance forward with your plastic bag, you will overload your horse's mind, which is also known as flooding. So in my opinion, the whole intent behind desensitizing your horse is not to induce flight, fight or fear, but instead keep the adrenaline down for both parties and allow your horse to relax. For this to happen, you need to use the methods of shaping where you have a goal in mind and you break down this goal into individual steps. First, you need to recognize, then acknowledge, and then you need to reward every try given on behalf of your horse. You can do that by releasing pressure or praising them. In the next two demos, you witness two horses experiencing this lesson. Romeo is somewhat high strung and therefore I begin with just the plastic bag alone. Later on we see Cowboy graduating to the flagging. There's a system that I use that's been very effective on, on every horse in fact. It hasn't not worked. You obviously alter it so you adapt it to the personality and the breed and the behaviour and the moment but it does work on everybody. Now with the shower, if you have the shower and the hose, you will begin if you would like to begin on the left lower leg, it's a good place to start off and gradually come up. With the plastic bag, it's nice to begin with a small one. We've got the one on the end of that whip over there. But if I just come in and begin to wave that around, it would be too much for him. So we've started with a little plastic bag. Some of them are familiar with eating from plastic bags, so they like it, and others won't like it at all. Now it has a noise, so you want to desensitize them to the noise, to the touch, and to many other things. We're going to begin with it being really small, and a nice place to begin, good boy Romeo, is at the withers. The withers are where they do mutual grooming. So this is an introductory place, he's got so much going on that it's a good place to begin. And if you make the bag really small, it can act like a grooming tool. So he should be okay with this. Now we're gonna use shaping, which means that we're gonna eventually paint the whole horse with a plastic bag, but we're gonna gradually get there. I personally like to create an area around the shoulders. This area is the one I've just started, will become the comfort zone. That means that ultimately, that's the place I'm going to come back to. In the beginning, he doesn't like it. So like any wild horse, they won't like the touch. They like the fact that you're walking away. So the fact that I'm coming in and creating this as an area might not be nice for him, but the walking away will be. 
once I've created this area here, I can always come back to it. So there were questions this morning where people asked, when do I raise the bar? This is, a, this is when you raise it. We've started here. We gradually moved an inch or two. We raise the bar. And the release will be the fact that you're coming back to the shoulder. If you do not feel comfortable going down the leg, which you wouldn't do with a wild horse, you'd take the stick with the flag on the end because they're going to strike it. If you don't feel comfortable like this, you wait and do it later. If you do, just proceed. Standing at the shoulder is the safest place to be. It means that if they strike out forward, you're OK. If they're going to bring their head around, you can move it over. <clears throat> and if they bring the back leg up, they can come all the way forward to the tendon, and they can come out. They can cow kick this far. So being close will help you, and you're not going to prevent being hurt if you're in the wrong place, but it's the safest one to be standing at. So stay at the shoulder when you're desensitizing. You begin on one side. I like to begin on the near side. That's where most of the handling's taken place. OK, we're just going to move him over a little bit so you can see the other side. Once I've completed the near side, I'll move over. And this is also a time, just watch that bag, that we can change the ring if we need to. Come into this shoulder. What's your body language? Because you're incorporating body language here. You're OK. And do the same thing on this side. Begin at the withers. Now you're reading your horse's response. So you're looking at how much he's tense in this area. What are the ears doing? What is he thinking? How, can, how much can he take before I need to release and walk away? So likewise, you cover the whole of the other side. Now, the touch that I've chosen is a firm touch. There's a fine line between being sneaky and being a predator. So if you come in too slow and timid, it will cause more problems than if you come in confident and yet smooth. So the first touch that the horse is like will be the firm touch. Good boy. And I tell you this because it's important. Because once you've done the firm touch, good boy. Just going to move him around so that you can see this. Once you've done a firm touch, you also want to be looking at a light touch. We're going to increase the size of the bag. And you'll see the difference on the light touch. For whatever reason, they find it harder to have this light touch. So I like to start with the firm. Now look at the cocked leg at the hind there, that hind leg. That's not a relaxed horse. People think it's a relaxed sign. When they tilt that leg back there, they're getting ready to run. So he's getting ready to run off, to flee. So as you're doing this, you're looking for them to relax, hopefully. If you try to hold on them too tight here, and you try to contain this mass, you'll get a problem. He needs to move his head around to see what's going on, and he needs to have the option to go. If he feels at any time that he's too restricted, he'll fight, because you've taken away the flight. See, as soon as I change to the light touch, he gets a little nervous, but we need the light touch. I'm also being very conscious not to cross the bag over to the other side so that we're working with the left brain and we're working with the right individually. Just going to do it a little bit on this side. We are. It's OK. So I'm coming in a little slower. just for him to feel that it's a slow touch. Good. 
So ultimately, we're not looking for him to flee. We're looking for him to stay. So I could have changed that and come in harsher and he'd just run. Or I can keep my pace and show him that it's not going to hurt him. It's going to be OK. You're OK, Romeo. You're OK. I can change it to help him out and do a firmer touch. And as soon as I change it to the light touch, he gets worried. It's OK. Now, I always bring him back to where I began because I want to create that as an OK place. If it were in the round pen, this would be the center of the round pen. Good. So there's enough line in here that he can move, not too much to place you in a vulnerable position. And ideally, what he needs to learn is a firm touch the light touch, a slow one, a slow one, slow motions, and also fast motions. He needs to take them all because that's what's going to happen in reality. Once he's got the slow, fast, and light and hairy touch, you also want to be coming in at different angles, and we're going to do that with the actual flag. And he will need to learn to come in from below. So he f sees things coming in at the feet like snakes, coming in from above, and beginning to cross over from the left to the right side. You don't want to cross over to this side, see how the ear alters, until you've actually been there. Because what will happen is they're going to jump on top of you because they move away from that item, and it's going to be on top of you. So if you've done the left and the right side, you can then begin to cross it over. So his head needs to stay straight or slightly tilted towards me. You don't want the head turning away because then the buttocks is your way. And if he were to bolt or kick, the buttocks will come round this way. So what I'm doing now, I'm coming in at a faster speed, releasing pressure by coming around here giving him a break and working both sides a little quicker. And seeing if we can change this. So we've gone back to go. He wants to place you at the front, because if he places you, you at the nose, you can't be working him at the side. So hence, him move. Good boy. See, that was nice. Was nice. There. Easy, easy. Good boy, you're okay. So it's getting a bit better. Now the sweat that you see, it's, it's beginning to build here, will be the mental anxiety that we were talking about rather than the physical. Good boy. So we're building in a little bit of a different step here where I can alter the pressure as I see fit and I can go lighter and firmer to help him out. And that seems to be working. The same time you're crossing over left and right. There's your jump, good boy. Ask him to stand and praise him. So he's going to be appreciating this release when he licks and chews. I'm going to walk him around for a moment. Good man. Want to see other things? Another boy. Okay. See what he's like. 
if he's never had a whip before. Cowboy came to my clinic to be started under saddle. A long-time student of mine had prepared him thoroughly for his special day, and so I was in a position to reach out to Cowboy, introduce him to his saddle, and conduct a successful ground driving session all the day before. We spent this particular session filling in the gaps and searching for any apparent holes. We've got quite a few blind areas, but I'd like him to be okay and stay in situ for that. Boy. Same on the other side, so we are working on both sides. Want to okay up here, down here. Now, if he were not so gentle, we could use this whip in this area. Here's the mutual grooming area, and we can make it really, really comfortable and do some scratching motions and help him. So, if you didn't want to get that close to him, you could do it from a distance as well. We're going to cover him all around around here too, just to make sure he's okay. And he seems pretty much okay with it. Boy. This is going to be for you, and if he gets scared of it, I'm just going to come in a little quicker, just to see it for a while. Not too bad at all. Okay, so if he wasn't okay with that, I would make it very small, make it small, put it in my hand, take it off of here, and then just rub him with it as if I were grooming. Because he's okay with it, I'm just gonna start working with him. And I do it like a paintbrush motion. So again, I could wrap it around my whip here and make it smaller if I need to, or keep it this size. You're aware of the fact that it makes a loud noise, you can hear that. Some horses will be worried with that noise. Good boy. And others are okay. You're gonna cover your horse with your bag as if you're painting it. Cover every area. And you do it in, in smooth motion to begin with. And then you go to the other side and do the same thing before you cross over from one side of the brain to the other. What you don't want to do is just bring the bag over if he's never seen it on that side. Show that white eye, see? It's not a big thing, but enough for him to be worried. I'm just going to hold it there. A real gentle, it's just going to be here, doing these weird things. Now, if he tilts the back leg here, if he cocks that in any way, that's because he's getting ready for flight. That's not a relaxed motion. He did it earlier on. That's because he hasn't got a clue what this thing's doing and he needs to get ready to run. And bring his head around a little so that if he does run, he runs forward and not away, presenting his hind end. See how it's just getting ready to cock? See if I can push it enough that he does. And we put it up here. Touching the body, 
these are all things you can do at home and all things that your computer should be able to do. You should be able to cross over from the left to the right side and have that snapping motion. We're going to cross it over here. This is the piece you're worried about. Beautiful. So he's learning that it's okay to stand. The other thing he's learning is to default to stand. So when he's a little worried, he's learning to stand here and it's going to be okay. And if he moves off, which I actually want, Stand, I'll walk away. So number one, if he moves off, I know that he's not standing in a freeze motion, i.e. he's shut down, and it's all so much that he's moving. I know that. But number two, he needs to be able to move with it. He needs to be able to have this thing move. Can you do that? Let's try that. Can you have it on you and move? Oh, not so much. There you go. Now this thing is chasing him a little bit, but hopefully in a way that he's okay, that he feels that he can carry it. Okay. Because if he can move freely with a smooth rhythm and a ball, we know he's dealing with it okay. Let's see if we can do that. What I would want, if it was fear-based, I'd want him to be able to default to standing when he's very worried. I'm just going to praise him. Good boy. And there's things that you can do to really get him comfortable with it. We're going to take him away from the center. And I'd like to be able to turn around and touch him out of the blue. Good boy. Because ultimately these are things that can happen when he's out. Good boy. This could come from the blue and touch him. So we're going to just work on that a little bit. So the bag will appear. Making sure that I'm safe, good boy. And I'd like his body not to react in any way. You see him twinge like that, and he's into pressure. I'd like him not to do that. I'd like this bag to be able to come on here, and his body not to curve around it. Good boy. Keep moving. Some of them will get so playful that they're playing with the bag. They'll come in here a few more times. Good boy. Get him to learn to follow. Get comfortable with it.
basically experience it on his own so that Patricia can run around. I don't mind him coming closer, but not too close. So he just is basically saying, I don't want to back up, I want your comfort. I'm just going to ask him to deal with it on his own a little. Okay. And ask him to stand. In this next segment, you'll witness the strong bond between Patricia and Black, which has been solidified over the years. Patricia has brought Black up with Reach Out to Horses methods, which have provided him with a well-rounded foundation while giving him confidence to venture out into today's world. This beautiful establishment is Black's home, and he's very familiar with his surroundings. Today, however, his usual arena has been turned into quite the unusual playground. Having introduced Black to his new setting, Patricia chose the police caution tape as one of her first exercises. There are several approaches you can take when asking a horse to venture into what they perceive to be unknown territory. And this is just one way. You need to take your horse's personal needs into account and if Black was overly concerned, Patricia might need to take a step backwards in order to proceed forward. A step backwards could mean moving the streamers off to one side, giving Black clear vision to walk forward. Then later on, as his comfort level grows, gradually allowing a few more streamers to obscure his vision until all of them were to hang right in front of his eyes. What's important right now is that Black doesn't freeze or remain stuck in his position for quite some time. It would be only natural for him to lean right into this pressure, waiting for Patricia to give, which subsequently reinforces the lesson of standing still. As moments go by, it's important to observe your horse's intentions and to feel his thoughts. If there's no doubt that he remain in situ, then a change needs to occur. It's important to keep your horse's feet moving because this in turn communicates leadership. As Patricia holds the pressure on Black's nose, she has choices. Horses learn from the release of pressure and as such she can either maintain this pressure waiting for the appropriate moment to release or she can pulse the pressure in her hand while maintaining tension in the line. Moving off to one side encourages forward motion. The square body positioning can act as an invitation to come and join you as it has previously when teaching your horse the distance. By arcing at an angle you're inviting your horse in a mildly passive way to come closer. It's less invasive and less assertive in its motions. Taking the angle away from the wall is the safest approach to take and allows your horse room for manoeuvre. Should they run through the streamers, you are in a position to draw their head around to you, thereby swinging the hips away, protecting you from any close encounters. Another option is to get your horse's feet moving. This is where the dance comes into play from the previous halter lesson. Having taught our horse to come off pressure in a safe and secure environment without any outside stimulus, he knows how to respond to the halter. With added stimulus or outside influences, he can often get confused or concerned. Horses appreciate familiarity. Returning to a prior lesson will not only give Black the necessary confidence to venture into unknown territory, it will remind him to place his trust in his leader. These same methods you see here, 
perfectly translate to the difficult trailer loading horse. We ask our horses to dance with us in a rocking horse motion, literally by taking a few backward steps and then asking them to come forward again, effectively making your way closer and closer towards the trailer, all the time using pressure, release, advance and retreat and praising any small attempts. Remember a very important factor is to keep your horse's feet moving. If your horse stands still and you know it's not out of fear, you should class standing still with rearing or bulking under the same banner for a consequence of backing. In other words, this means if your horse insists on standing for a while, then he should back up. By making your horse work instead of rest, creating discomfort versus comfort, you prevent your horse from owning standing still or backing up. Constant fluidity is the key. Your horse needs to take responsibility for his actions and rest isn't one of them. The consequence of backing means you put your horse to work, moving them out of your herd of two, while also creating personal space, respect and boundaries. Horses naturally move away from discomfort into comfort, thus making your request very clear to your horse. It will be much harder now to introduce him to these, um, what do you call them? the streamers from the other side because it's the other eye so you want some repetition they learn through repetition now good job and so she wants to do that about half a dozen times until there's no pause because you're looking for the rhythm and the consistency in the footfall so no pause we're going to move on and on and on until that works and then we can go the other way So for those people that have learned how to use the halter and have had the introduction to the body language, this is how you take it to the next stage. People always ask, how do I do that now? Well, here it is. You're using the principles, the methods, the concepts, and putting them into everyday life. <laughs> As Black gets more confident with this exercise, you'll see his behavior change. So not only the body language, he become more relaxed and more forward, but his behavior will change. Quite often, if you're doing trailer loading and they're young colts, they begin to run out and they kick up their heels, they play, <laughs> good job, and they throw the head a little bit and they'd be very happy with what they've been able to do. So his lips going, you see the top lip goes a bit more. So he appreciates that. See, there's a little bit of a nipping. I can do this now. Whereas before his jaw was tight, so he wasn't able to perform and, and relax the jaw. Now it's, it's working. So let's see how much he can do. Good job. Patricia and I have worked together during numerous reach out to horses clinics over the years. Teamwork is a significant part of horsemanship. For safety reasons, it's important that you communicate with one another just as much as you do with the silent language of the horse. So we have some noise makers. Okay. And what we would like Black to be able to do, it's going to be really noisy, is be able to stand there when the sound comes all around him. So he's fine. So the area that will be most hard for him will be the blind spot. And he's good. And the crossing over from left to right. So he's fine with the noise. Noise isn't the issue. We'll try something different. That's good. And praise him. So this is also to answer your question. You're trying for him to stand there and do a good job. We want him to succeed, we don't want him to fail. So a little noise every now and then. I'm not going to hold it for 10 seconds and blow his mind and say, deal with this. Very nice. And as he gets comfortable with it, the same principles of using longer, so we're not reinforcing every time. Oops. Shake it. Maybe that's it. He couldn't have died after 10. I think I just need 
the wrist action here. Okay, we're working. Good boy. How about this close? Would that work for you? Good boy. You want to look at it? How about if we do it this close? Good boy. So the distance, you were asking about the distance. The distance is important. The further back you are, the less pressure involved. The closer you are, greater pressure. So he's got two people handling him. Good boy. <laughs> okay, good. The handler will be on the same side as the person doing the task. So you'll see Patricia move around. That means that it's her job to take care of me. And if I'm here and he suddenly takes an offense to me being here, Patricia needs to take care of that and bring his head around so that his hind end doesn't kick. He needs to perceive that he can leave so he's got enough head action that he can look and smell and do all the things he has to do. But at the same time, she protects me. Boy. Can you have it touch you? I think that's good. I'm a good man. <laughs> okay, so have fun with the horns. It's something flying at your horse. I'd like to be able to make progress that I can obviously get it to him because if he went into a parade, there will be silly string. There's also going to be party poppers. There's going to be other things that children throw at them by mistake. So this would be really hard for Romeo <laughs> and not recommended on the first day. Good boy. So in effect, we're going to just put it around him for now. Good boy. And it comes off pretty easy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Good boy. Excellent. Good boy. So we're just about touching this hoof now. I'm going to touch the leg. You want to, do you want to look at that too? Good boy. It smells good. Okay, ready? Good boy. You ready for the rest? No, you're okay. You're okay. Not okay now. It's okay. Let me just pet him. It's okay. I'm going to go back a bit. Good boy. Good man. We've now gone to the left side, if you didn't realize. Good boy. Good man. Good boy. I'm going to do a little longer here still. So he's getting a lot of reward when he's standing. Trying to make it a little longer, a little different, a little faster motions. I'm releasing the pressure of the can, but also the body. And Patricia's doing the same thing. She's stepping back and praising. So there's a lot of different releases going on. Good boy. I've gone for height this time rather than touch. Thought that might make a difference. We go for height on this side. Good man. I haven't got anything that just makes a noise, have we? Just the hand thing. The what thing? Yeah, but not the. That noise. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Just wanted to try it. And really what Marcus was saying earlier about trying the things, you know, you want to try to know the boundaries and how far can I go and what does he like and what doesn't he like. Hopefully without inducing too much flight here. Good 
boy, I think we've finished the can. At least I got you once. Excellent. Good man. Good boy. I'd like to spray him. Yeah. He did that really well, though. Good boy. Excellent. Okay, let's try a bit more when you're ready. No, not that way. Okay. Keep in there. Good boy, look at you. Actually, it's great because it's a crackling sound too. Very nice. And walk away. So it's looking good. This will have the smell too. Hopefully they last a little longer. So the same rule applies. You don't want to get too close. The closer you are, the greater the pressure. And you can gradually work with your horse. It's nice to walk around them because you're releasing the pressure as you go. He wants, to, he's curious, look at that. He's got the smell, he wants to come with me. Come on then. He can come with the sparklers, that's okay. There you go, that one's done. Good boy. And he can see the sparklers out of the left and the right eye. That's so important that he gets that experience. We'll do this again. Do you know, if he f found it too hard, you'd walk away. And if I was doing this on my own without a handler, he'd follow the sparklers. So, Patricia, do you want to take these? Now that we know he's okay, just, just walk away, watch your coils. A longer line. Nice long line. And you can move them around a bit. But if they found that harder, it's nice to start with two people, get a read on your horse. If he's okay, you can move that around and put it high and low and all that good stuff. There we go. <laughs> and if you saw the adrenaline come up, you'd walk away. To be very creative this afternoon when it's your turn, you can dance with these hula hoops <laughs> if you want to be energetic, like Kimberly. <laughs> I'm about the three second queen. <laughs> That's it, the hula hoops. Okay, we leave a few other things as a surprise this afternoon, but you're getting the general idea of how this works and the idea is that he has fun. Keep it fun. It's not a matter of he comes to work and this is awful. The more he wants to play, and in this case, he's nuzzling and he's okay with it. That's what we want. We want him to want to come back in here and enjoy this next time. He likes the mutual grooming look. So, Patricia. So, she knows what motivates her horse.
It has often been said that there are 26 horse characters at their breed, personal history and environment and the result is a wide variety of personalities to deal with which in turn provides you with a lifetime of learning. You've just met a number of different breeds and seen their unique learning styles. Now I'd like you to meet Bob, an eight-year-old quarter horse. Bob is quite the clown. He loves to entertain himself and others. He's naturally curious, sociable and quite expressive. The kind of natural curiosity he displays aided us in introducing him to these new experiences. Initially Sandy led Bob from the police streamers to the fan. She gradually made her way closer and closer towards the fan, making circular motions along the way. Without any prior knowledge of his history, Sandy was able to gain a good read on how Bob would likely react to the visual stimulus and the rather intrusive noise. Noticing that Bob looked quite at ease, Sandy let him stand still for a moment and observe the motions these strands made while blowing in the wind. Watch how Bob remains relaxed and begins to engage with the strands. He stretches out to touch them with his nose and actually tries to chew them at some point. All four of his feet are firmly on the ground, his muscles soft as he pays attention to his handler. Sandy intermittently reaches out to Bob and pets him on his neck to acknowledge his efforts and to reinforce that his response is what she's looking for. Her calm energy and relaxed nature confirms to Bob that there's nothing to be concerned about. You may actually be wondering why Bob is not disturbed by this exercise when so many other horses would be. Well, the answer lies in the fact that one, it was an extremely hot day and Bob rather enjoyed the chance to cool down. Two, Bob has a fan at home right outside his stall. And three, he had already been introduced to the police caution tape. So he was in fact familiar with the noise, the cooling system, and just needed to get to know the flowing strands. His desire to stand by the cool fan far exceeded any possible flight instincts. Rap music, country, classic or pop, it really doesn't matter to Bob. Quiet, loud, intermittent, he took it all in his stride and entertained his whole crew. Now let's look at some tips that will help you in making your sessions as safe as possible. There's no harm in maintaining a positive attitude, believing your horse will come to you or follow closely. But be aware they may surprise you at any time. If you didn't catch the rope magically wrapping itself around Sandy's leg, look again. We cannot respond to our horses as quickly as they react, but we can be properly prepared. Make sure you coil your rope just like an accordion, allowing it to leave your hand without catching any fingers. Each coil is a safe length to prevent you from getting caught up. Always be on the lookout for safety precautions, especially when working in pairs. In this instance, Susan would have placed herself in quite the precarious position against the wall without a safe escape route. Had Bob bolted his way through the streamers, she could have got kicked or squashed. By placing herself on the near side, the same side as the handler, she has room to step back out of any kick zone. The object is to make the task as simple as possible for everyone involved. The motto being, keep it simple. Simple is best. At this point, Bob's confidence builds and he begins to create a game out of this exercise. The art of listening to your horse is to know how long to persist at a certain task, when to raise the bar and when to finish on a good note. The girls made the appropriate decision to work through Bob's reaction until he became calm, so to reward the good note. This exercise really promotes partnership and focus for both us and our horses. Now that Bob feels confident, he reverts back to his usual behaviour patterns and biting creeps in. Sandy has the challenge to reward one behaviour while discouraging the other. Bob may think he has overcome this obstacle, but there's more to learn and his concentration is of importance. Did you spot the type of schooling Sandy chose to reprimand Bob's biting with? It was a tap on the coronary band, which is known as distraction. Here's the opportunity for you to test your knowledge and observation skills to see how many kinds of reward you witness. Watch how Marcus reads his horse by glancing at his eye periodically. This gives Marcus a good idea as to ongoing thoughts and yet at the same time doesn't desensitize his horse to eye contact. By running his hand along the side, Marcus is physically able to feel his horse's comfort level while at the same time provide necessary reassurance. 
Should his charge spook towards Marcus, he's in a position to push himself back and away to prevent harm or injury. You just need to be nimble on your feet. This is how you want the scene to look, tranquil. Your horse learns far more while his adrenaline is down. He remembers the minor releases of pressure, the steps backwards you took, the moments of rest, the soft strokes on his body, and the encouragement of your voice. Jenny's guy did wonderfully as Rosemary introduced him to a multicolored beach ball. At first she rubbed him all over his body on both sides that he learned about the sensation, size, and color. What you don't get to see is the duration Rosemary took to set him at ease before moving on to the next lesson. Before long we teamed up to roll the ball all over the top of his back and in between his legs ensuring multiple approaches. Horses learn through repetition. They learn the right behaviour patterns in a very short period of time and they learn the undesirable behaviour patterns just as quickly. Many lessons can be learned after just three times. Yes, that's right, it doesn't take very long to create a bad habit or for that matter change behaviour positively. We included different speeds, minor mishaps and entered blind areas from a number of angles to cover as many eventualities as possible. Helium balloons are a favourite in the world of parades and parties. They have a tendency to be bright and shiny while swaying ominously in the wind and even sometimes escaping children's clutches, making their way up high in the sky. Horses carry an innate fear passed down from generation to generation that birds of prey may attack them from above. They naturally carry their heads high to focus on an object above and given the chance their curiosity serves them really well. Over the course of the clinic Kimberly specifically addressed Dortson's need to become comfortable around golf carts. Dawson was exposed to them at her boarding facility and yet had begun to run over the top of people in her attempts to get away. Let's look at the points of interest during these clips for this exercise to be successful. Dotson's size and personality alone can be a little intimidating. And once you add fear into the equation, there's little room for reasoning. It was therefore imperative that we take the correct preparatory measures. Over the weekend, Kimberly learned to read Dotson's gestures, improve upon her own timing and gain confidence. Everything necessary for both parties to trust in their leader. Marcus was carefully chosen as an experienced horseman to drive the golf cart. During the whole exercise, he carefully watched Dortson's response to the cart, adapting his speed accordingly. He takes the distance between he and Dortson into account and knows that the closer he is, the greater the pressure. Watch as the shape and size of his circles alter. He's also conscious of her blind areas so not to create undue confusion. Instead, he increases his presence there very gradually. Focus on Kimberly's body language. Note her square and upright shoulders located in front of her horse, which indicates to Dortson to respect and not invade her space. Kimberly's body is positioned slightly off to the left side for Dortson to perceive that she has an exit route and is not forced to stay in any way. This positioning also puts Kimberly in a safe place. Kimberly's eyes are directed to watch the whole of her horse. She positions them either on her horse's chest or front, which allows her to gauge Dortson's thoughts. The left hand remains soft without pressure or tension, which in turn relays to Dortson there's no need to be anxious. In the same manner, it closes when necessary to direct Dortson's feet. By making this kind of distinction, there's a clear signal for Dortson. The slack in the line allows for Dortson to move ahead so she can focus and watch all movement. It's important to realize that you'll not be able to contain the large mass of your horse, so you need to work with the mind whenever possible. Different approaches and angles work both eyes and is of utmost importance to ensure multiple visual scenes. We began to create the centerpiece as a place of safety, returning Dortson to the center at all times when she received reassurance and praise. Marcus gauged how long each portion of the lesson should be and stopped the golf cart for both safety reasons or to reward Dawson's tries. As Marcus travelled in the sand he noticed the golf cart rattling and in short he also addressed this disturbance during the lesson. One of the most important factors is to create a place of learning where our horses can teach themselves. Creativity is also the key here, imitating as many scenarios as your imagination allows.
earlier you saw Cynthia introduce Casey to the obstacle course in hand, Casey subsequently graduated with honours from each station and is naturally a well-rounded, mature schoolmaster. I cannot stress enough that ridden obstacle courses should not be attempted unless you know your horse's nature and are both confident. Additionally, you should be a very competent rider or you have sought professional advice. At this point, you may have been wondering how you take these methods onto horseback. Your horse is no longer able to read your body language as you're now sitting on his back. He no longer has contact with your eyes and you should be questioning whether waving your arms around and becoming assertive is really appropriate. For young horses being started under saddle, we bridge the gap from body language on the ground to rider's aids. But for mature horses, the answer lies in the principles of the methods. You take the concepts with you onto horseback. You translate all the techniques you've accumulated on the ground and apply it to your riding. It's really that simple. Just a few hours prior to riding this course, Casey had been in the arena with another student, successfully completing all tasks he faced. This prior knowledge allowed Patricia to walk Casey over the most familiar obstacle first, then moving on to the plastic bags and stands. Note that Patricia rides Casey on a reasonably long rein, allowing him to be actively involved with the whole venture. This shows that she's not anxious, but instead carries a confidence that Casey can feel. Holding reins very short and trying to contain a 1500 pound scared mass can be challenging at the best of times, not to mention when you're worried with what may happen. You can imagine your horse's response when you're sending signals that convey there's something to be concerned about. Your horse will feel it's imperative that he quickly take you to a place of safety, far, far away. Patricia guides Casey to the new obstacle, praising him with her voice, release of direct pressure on the reins, and a moment to stand and relax. All of which signal to Casey that he's conducting himself in a manner in which Patricia approves. It confirms to Casey that he's acting correctly. Clear and accurate guidance is the key when there's space around an obstacle. You want to open the door to the right action and close it on the undesirable one. Instead of holding a line in your hand, you have reins. Instead of talking to your horse with your body language, you have body motion. You have a window of three seconds to reward your horse, and yet optimum timing is only three to eight tenths of a second. As you saw today, I spent considerable time desensitizing my young horses to plastic bags from the ground. From there we attach plastic bags to the saddle, one at a time, to introduce unstarted horses to the sound, sensation and feeling of moving items. This will prepare them for their first rider, but also for any unforeseen encounters on the trail. There are many advantages to introducing these kinds of sensations, which include preparing horses for rain jackets, weather conditions, packing trips, parades, and so much more. For a moment, let's suppose there's no need to examine riding styles. Instead, we shall only concentrate on the horse's psychology and the communication between horse and rider. The manner in which you approach the obstacle is exceedingly important. As a partnership, you need to feel your horse's needs and his emotions because you can rest assured he's feeling yours. If you're lacking in confidence, your horse may decide to protect you by actually refusing the obstacle. Not all horses will compensate for their riders, but others are only too happy to oblige. This energy exchange is a language in itself. It's the language of animals, the language of nature, and extends all the way to visualization. Visualization is also known as telepathy and interspecies communication, and it's a powerful tool to explore. Visualize. See yourself successfully completing the task. Successfully is the key word. Neither the universe nor animals recognize the word don't. They only hear what follows. If Patricia was hoping for Casey not to stop in front of the streamers and she was telling herself, don't stop here, she would in fact be communicating to him, stop here. Another way to embrace this thought would be if you were to think to yourself, don't fall off now. You would be seeing yourself in your mind's eye falling off your horse instead of seeing yourself taking the jump successfully. Your thoughts are powerful and are always reflected in your actions. Horses work with the path of least resistance. If it's easier for them to turn around and go the other way than face something that causes them concern, they'll do just that. The first time Patricia approached the police caution tape, Casey stood at a slight angle, avoiding the strands until Patricia created a gap for him to look right through. 
On the second approach, Casey had figured out that if he stood close enough to the wall, he could create his own gap and would not have to negotiate the strands. Instead, he could barge his way through a small opening. For the third approach, Patricia walked Casey towards the centre of the strands, setting him up correctly. Casey, however, had learnt by the third time that he felt most comfortable facing away from the streamers with a possible escape route. Patricia immediately recognised Casey's actions and accepted what he was willing to offer. She instantly created a smaller gap than previously and increased the speed in which she asked Casey to walk forward through the tape. Watch how Casey begins to turn his head away less and instead becomes an active participant in exploring and moving the tape to one side. His concerns are being replaced by confidence, at first in his rider and now in his own ability. This is true teamwork. The approach Patricia has taken with Casey is to create an environment in which he wants to learn. She guided him to do the right thing, created the opportunities for him to walk through and at the same time maintained a safe atmosphere. These principles help our horses to learn, create motivation and understanding which leads to the trust-based relationship you're trying to develop. As you progress, your actions will solidify the foundations you've worked so hard to achieve. Once you've achieved your day's lesson and ended on a good note, it's important to remember that your horse needs to repeat this lesson in numerous locations. You may find that your horse has associated this exercise to this particular location. In order to solidify your efforts, you need to introduce new locations into the picture. You also want to change and or increase the outside stimulus. I personally have found that three to five different places such as the round pen arena, paddock, grass area, Picadaro, will set you up for success. Well that's it. I hope this program has given you some ideas on how you can safely desensitize your horse to the potentially frightening experiences he may come across. Remember, creativity and a relaxed confidence are crucial as you develop that trust-based relationship with your horse. I'd like to thank you for watching and letting me be a part of your training. Even if this is just a small piece, it is you, people who love their horses, who inspire me to continue spreading this message of creating a gentle, trust-based relationship between horse and human. This is the message of Reach Out to Horses and it's my hope that through these methods we can deepen our connection to our horses, ourselves, the world around us. Let's give back to these amazing, majestic beings who touch our hearts as no others can. Thank you and happy trails.